Welcome to this episode of Groovy On, where I introduce the Kibashi system, a module-based kit system for creating miniature buildings. Kibashi is a kit system for creating model buildings. The kit consists of building pieces that can be assembled, similar to Lego pieces, to a vast variety of different buildings. We are currently developing the concept and building test kits. The advantage to the Kibashi system is that a builder with limited experience can create very complicated models while slowly building up the expertise. With the ability to dry fit different concepts, you can evaluate several designs before you commit and begin building. The individual kit pieces are laser cut from 1.5mm thick plywood and can be dry assembled to try out and iterate on a building design. Once you've decided on a design, you can glue the pieces together using CA glue, wood glue or other types of glue. To maximize variation, the walls of the kit can be assembled to different heights. They can have different openings within them, and the openings can be trimmed differently. Each type of door or window come with at least one type of laser cut paper trim. Some trims are even multi-layered for a more elaborate look. The variation in the pieces is intended to make each building unique, and roofs are another thing that make buildings unique. Have you ever noticed how the angle of roofs vary across the world? This is because of differing snow loads and rain loads. If you're building a desert scene, flat roofs are appropriate. If you're building an alp village, high peaked roofs are appropriate. A shed roof is another design choice. It can be used to make a building look modern or make the building look like an improvised shed. Kibashi features different scales. We're currently working on the H, O and N scales. Don't worry if that doesn't mean anything to you. Some of the kits will have very clear themes, such as a Christmas village which you could place in your entrance during the holidays. Each model kit comes with blueprints for buildings that can be built from the kit. But you're of course free to build anything you want. Here's a building that's placed on a mirror for a comical effect. With more skill, I'm sure I could have made the house look like it's floating. Here's an outhouse for regular loads. And another one for very wide loads. And this is for very deep loads. I call this house the Prince of Wales house. The reason is because of the balconies. And this is what it looks like with the lights on. That light source seems slightly too big. Fits perfectly. May I offer a garage? You can use coffee stir sticks, balsa wood, styrene sheets, craft paper and other model builder's tools to bring your vision to life. Here follows an abbreviated demonstration of me building a model building. It's not intended as a tutorial which will surely follow, but to give you an idea of what can be done within the system. I decided to reimagine the Iron Bridge works building from the YouTuber Shandwell as an homage. You'll find a link in the description below. Mine isn't as nice as his, but I think it came out alright, especially considering my limited skill as a model builder. I start by dry assembling the building, trying to figure out what size and shape I want. This building doesn't fit perfectly 
with the Kibashi system, but that's fine. The system is meant to be modified when required. For instance, to create the car tunnel, I have to modify a few pieces and build a few new structures. Once I'm done with the dry fitting, I disassemble the entire building and remake each wall out of the largest kit pieces that'll fit. That helps with stability. I then replace the wall openings with what's required for that spot, a door, a window or a solid wall. Then I glue up each wall separately and let the glue set. When each wall piece is finished, I glue them together into their final form. In this case, I'm using super glue and accelerator because I'm impatient. Then I can separate the building from the build platform. Each wall must be sanded flat so there are no high spots, as these will cause problems later on. As the high spots are fixed, I move on to fixing the low spots using filler. There are many types of filler that could be used, but Bostic Fine Filler seems to dry very fast and doesn't have an obnoxious odor. It's also meant for houses, so it's not very expensive. The sloppier you get with the filler, the more time you'll have to spend cleaning it up later. And as you can see, I was being quite sloppy. Applying filler is a multi-step process, because after filler has been applied, the wall needs to be sanded again. At this point, you may find new issues that need to be addressed, but I suggest listening to an audiobook or a podcast, it'll make the time fly. If you've accidentally plugged up some of your windows or doors with the filler, it's an easy task to poke them out using a pokey tool. The point of all this filling is to hide the seam lines between the kit pieces. If you think that the paint will hide them, you're in for a rude awakening. Then I seal the entire model using Mod Podge, diluted with a bit of water. I colored the mixture brown, but as I later sprayed painted the entire model, this wasn't really necessary. Also, sealing the model before spray painting seems like a waste of effort in retrospect. I don't have any footage of the house being spray painted, but this is what it looked like after. Once the model has been primed, new issues reveal themselves and need to be fixed. It's now time to build the car tunnel. The tunnel requires a couple of door openings, but that's easy enough to cut. Here we go for some more filler and more sanding. Now it's time to begin the paint job. I'm starting with something that looks like brick color. I'm using cheap acrylic paints that I bought at the hardware store, nothing fancy at all. I then add the pediment, which should have been added way earlier in the process, I simply forgot. The pediment also gets some trim to make it look more elegant. Next, because I wanted a brick building, I experimented with a lot of different brick shaped stencil and I really liked how this one turned out. The stencil was laser cut from cardstock and then sealed using matte varnish to avoid it soaking up the paint. The paint must be stippled on in tiny amounts at a time. Chandwell's original building uses printed brick paper, which looks awesome, but this technique works also.
Now it's time for the trims around the windows. The Iron Bridge Works building has these interesting stone structures surrounding the windows. I tried to create them using painted paper. It all kind of looks flat though until the weathering process in the end. Before weathering, I sealed the entire model with dilute Mod Podge, but matte varnish would have worked just as well. This is to prevent the weathering washes from biting too hard into the model, allowing me to move them around and wipe them off as needed. For weathering I use a black wash, a brown wash and a white wash. The washes are tiny amounts of acrylic paints diluted with water to make them run. The idea is that the wash will go into nooks and crannies making them stand out and increase the contrast and depth of the model. The process makes the building look like it's been standing out in the weather for a really long time. It's a very hard process to master and I'm far from being good at it, but the effort does leave the model looking more interesting. Here I'm adding the windows and window trims to the building. It's quite fiddly work and if it could be added while the walls are still flat then that would be a big help. But then you'd have issues with painting the walls without getting the windows painted over. I forgot to film adding the tiles to the roof. They were made from a black strip of cardstock where tiles were cut into the long side. Think of it as a comb with really long teeth. I was very surprised how important the roof material was to the finished look of the building. And this is what the finished piece looks like. Comparatively little time was spent actually building the house, most of the time was spent finishing it. But building the house is technically the hardest part, so I think that this considerably lowers the barrier of entry. We'll be sure to mention any progress on this concept in the description below. Please let us know what you think about this concept and share the video.